his presence. Yeah. Quiet anticipation. Now, just like we were singing, pull down heaven, bring him down heaven. Now draw on him. Draw. Close your eyes and draw on heaven. Draw. Okay, it's, a, it's at the ceiling. You're not, come on, draw. Right down to the fingertips. All right, now I could feel it tickling my hair. All right, now you get ready to draw it to the floor. Draw it to the floor in Jesus' name. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, I'm all done. I'm going to turn it over to Rodney. <laughs> the anointing's here. Clear to the floor, my friend. Take it. Somebody, would you mind? Would find me the scripture, uh, and it was from Paul, how I long to impart a spiritual gift to you. Would you find that scripture for me, please? What is it? Yes, thank you so much. I was in Romans 1 and didn't know what the heck was going on. Because it's not highlighted. It's underlined, but it ain't highlighted. You highlighting your Bible? Well, it's been good so far. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the power of impartation because if we don't understand it, then meetings like this can just go by. Meetings like this can just go by and uh, just kind of be one of those things and uh, we just don't want to touch it. We want to sustain it. We just don't want to touch it. We want to sustain it. We want to, we want to uh, walk in the stewardship of the goodness of the Lord. Those that are faithful with the little can be entrusted with more. That's Bible. That's what it says, right? So I want you to look at Romans 1.11. I want you to see something here that is uh, just been a profound word in my personal life. I am fruit of impartation. I'm fruit of it. I know it's real. I know it exists. And I know that it's been watered down. And we do impartation services that uh, it didn't really seem like anything happened. <clears throat> Nobody else has ever been in a meeting like that? We're going to do an impartation and, you know, and things go by and nothing ever happened. Now what happened? Did we just shift and we went flat? What happened? Are you with me tonight? Is everybody good? You're just kind of marinating? Okay. I understand that. It's like when I get in the car and then Mike begins to talk to me about things across town. And I'm just like, I hear you, Mike, but I don't understand what you're saying. You know, I'm just, wow. Just in this place, you know, going, man. So I can, I can go with that. But maybe blink. Or something and just kind of give me a sign that, that you're following me, that you're with me, that we're in partnership on this thing. Amen. Can we do that together? All right. So are you in Romans one uh, eleven? It says, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, watch this, so that you might be established. Established. Set in. Firmly grounded. Roots that go down deep, not being tossed to and fro. Do you want to know what causes your roots to go down deep? Storms. It has been proven. How many remember the 80s? Do you remember the movie Biodome? Do you remember that? Who remembers that? Come on, get them up. The movie Biodome uh, actually exists. Uh, they've created a biodome that has uh, uh, created an atmosphere of these different types of climates. And it's in its perfect form. It's in its perfect state. The right amount of oxygen, the right amount of water, the right amount of food. 
uh, the right atmosphere. There's things that they've created that it's, it's like this uh, biodome, and it's in its perfect state. Somebody say it's perfect state. But it's interesting because what they discovered was they were planting these trees in this uh, perfect environment, and uh, they would grow to a certain height, and when they did, they'd fall over. They would grow up so high, and then they would fall over. And what they discovered was the reason they fell over is because their root system wasn't strong enough to keep them upright. And that's what storms do. There, it was the perfect climate where there was no storm. There was no opposition. There was no stress. If there's no opposition or any stress, that's what causes our roots to go down a little bit deeper that we can become stronger. There was no opposition to signal the roots to go down deeper. So don't rebuke the storms. Walk on them. Sleep in them. <laughs> Whoa. Right? Take a nap, man. Take a nap. Let the peace of God surpass all understanding. Amen? The Bible recognizes you and I as trees of righteousness. It's true. And the Bible says that we're guaranteed those things that don't bear fruit, He'll cut it off and throw it into the fire. And only that which bear fruits can become more fruitful, right? Somebody say pruning. So the, I just throw that in there. Because storms will come and storms will go. But as the earth remains, so will God's Word. It's eternal. All right? So he says, For as I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift that you might be established. Somebody say impartation. He wants you anchored in truth. There are moments in time that God has appointed that He just kind of sweeps in with His arm and creates harvest. In other words, have you ever heard it said, uh, don't say that harvest is in this time. Don't, Don't say that harvest is in this time. For I tell you, to lift up your head, open your eyes, and see that the harvest is ready. You know what that simply means? It means that you can go down the street and you can find somebody that needs Jesus. Harvest is always. But then there's those kairos moments. Am I messing the camera up? Okay. All right? But then there's those kairos moments where it's appointed and the Lord says, I'm just going to do it. And He sweeps in a harvest. In other words, He begins to do what we can't do ourselves. Somebody say divine intervention. If there was ever a day that we needed divine intervention, it's right now. You can't expect things to get darker and Him not get brighter. You are light in a dark place. So Paul's not saying something uh, in the lines of, you know, man, I just really long to hang out with you to get you something that you might be established. Let's, uh, Let's have some meetings. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. It's not what he's talking about here. There is a longing on the inside of him that he's saying, what is in me? If it can come on you, you will never be the same. And there's this longing to get it out. I'm looking for a place to happen. If there's not a fire, I'll start one. If God's not moving, move Him. Say, well, Rodney, that's kind of arrogant. No, it's confident. 
Because the very reason that Jesus died and was rose again was for the redemption in the mighty name of Jesus of all mankind. You owe this region an encounter. You do. The greatest asset that you and I have is ones to steward time. He loved us so much, He plucked us out of eternity and placed us in time. He said, I'm going to give you something precious. Time. I want you to steward it. How many's ever heard the phrase coined, redeem the time? So He says, I long to get to you that I might impart to you, somebody say impart. That means transfer. That means Christ in me wants to become Christ in you. God will always bring people in your path that have what you need to get you to where God wants you to be. It's a given. We talked about it this morning. Some of you were like, we have a meeting this morning? <laughs> we were amongst friends. And we were talking about this particular subject. And if we don't understand impartation, then we'll look at gatherings like this as, well, man, I guess we'll show up and couple of people's probably going to drop to the floor. I don't think I'll drop to the floor this time. Try to knock me over. <laughs> you know, and, and they like, you know, try to create some type of spontaneous uh, breaking the mold mentality of, you know, because, you know, they're really in this place of just same oh same oh. Been there, done that. Let's just do what we do. And, you know, if it was about falling down, We should have started out by falling on the floor and then leaving because I'm kind of hungry. Right? So there's got to be something more than just us falling down. There's got to be something more than a few goosebumps, than a few tingling of the ears. There has to be something more when we get together in faith. And so this is what Paul is saying. He's saying, I long to be, I can't wait to get there because if I can get there, something's going to happen. And so there's this motivated seal on the inside of him that he knows that he knows that he knows. If I can get there, something's going to happen. Have you ever felt that about a meeting? They say if it's alive, it's worth the drive. Right? If I can just get there, I'm talking about real zeal. Tonight is our night because I feel Him turning up the brilliancy and the illumination of zeal. Impartation. Are you with me? Let me just give you a couple of biblical examples. Are you ready? Let's look at Matthew 10. Let's take a look at what impartation looks like. Because if you can understand the simplicity of impartation, gatherings like this will forever be fruitful in your life. I've had people leave and go, I didn't fall down. I didn't get the joy. I didn't get the gold. Man. You know, and then they want to fall in condemnation. Well, what was wrong with me? What did I do? What did I not do? Must have been me. I cussed before I walked in the building. You know, and they think about all this stupid stuff, man. Listen, friends, God is a good God. He's trying to get something to us. He's not trying to take anything from us. 
It's true. He's a good God. Are you in Matthew? Well, you're amazing because I'm still trying to get there. Matthew 10. Who? What'd they do? Awesome. He's a preacher. All right, look at this in Matthew. Um, I'm going to begin in the last couple of verses of verse 9, just for the sake that it's laid out in my Bible. Matthew 9, uh, 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, watch this, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. Now, I don't have time to go into it, but the desert is associated with evangelism and salvation. Biblically, it is made referred to as the desert. The desert is associated with evangelism and salvation. And Mike, I'll let you elaborate on that later and we can work all that out. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to continue. Therefore, pray to the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into the harvest field. Now look at uh, Matthew 10 and verse 1. Now watch this. I'm talking about impartation. Are you with me? And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now look at verse 2. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. Did you catch it? Let me back up. Verse 38, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers and do His harvest. And when He had called His twelve, now look at verse 2, now the names of the twelve, impartation. Whoa, Jesus gave. They'll fill you in. There was a name change. There was a new identity. They went from disciples to apostles. How fast? Just like that. The power of impartation activates something that wasn't activated before. Authentic impartation activates. I love this. I love this. Because the eye is not seen, remember? The ear is not heard, nor has it even entered our hearts. That which has been prepared by God. For those that love Him, but the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and then reveals those things to you and I. So right now, there's something on the inside of you that your eye hadn't seen and your ear hadn't heard. But when Christ comes and Creator touches His creation, it provokes a response. I'm talking about impart. This particular one brings about a new administration in a way of life. They go from being a disciple to receiving from Christ Himself. And now they're apostles. Whoa. Impartation. Isn't that cool? How many know Bob Jones? 
I was uh, in uh, a meeting in uh, Dallas, Texas. Bob Jones was there. There was a number of people there. Uh, I was catching for Bob Jones. And uh, this is one of the first times that I was ever exposed to Bob Jones. And uh, does anybody, is, is anybody aware of his character and, and his demeanor and everything? I mean, he's just really laid back. I mean, he's like in his late 70s now, isn't he? But at this time, I was in Dallas, Texas, and I'm catching for Bob Jones. And, uh, and he would stop, and he'd go, there's the wind of the Spirit. And all of a sudden, I felt this crisp, cool breeze just brisk across my face. And I went. I was like, oh my gosh. That's amazing, man. That's cool. And as I'm standing there, I look up, and we're standing under an air conditioning vent. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, Bob, come on, man. Dude, that's the air conditioner, man. And all of a sudden, we're walking a little bit more, and he gets to this side of the room over here, and he goes, whoa, the wind of the Spirit's even stronger on this side. I feel it again. Go across the front of my face. It felt like my face was standing in front of Freon. Ice cold Freon. It was like this crisp, cool, igloo, Alaska breeze. And I'm there just getting cold. But naturally, I begin to look up. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, man, Bob, you got to stop doing that, man. Let me tell you something about impartation. The mind wants to rob you from an encounter. I can prove this in the book of Corinthians. Corinthians 1, yeah, 1 Corinthians, I hope, yep, 2.9, 1 Corinthians 2.9, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him, verse 10, but God has revealed them to us, how? Through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now look at verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Verse 14. I know I'm skipping around, but read the whole thing. It's all good. All right? But just for the sake of time, look at verse 14. But the natural man, the natural man, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Okay, I need you to take three steps back, make one to the left, right there. That's foolishness to the natural mind. It is. Why do you have to stand over there? Why are you talking about angels? It's foolishness to the natural mind. And the only reason it's foolishness is because it's an unseen realm. That means this has been dictating my future for too long. You can see things how they are, or you can see things how they appear. You're not going to be able to base the facts together with the truth. We talked about this earlier. Just because you have some facts doesn't necessarily mean you have the truth. Let me give you an example. Mary in the Bible. How many know Mary? Mother of Jesus. Shandala Kandala. All right? She's pregnant. 
This is a fact. But she never slept with a man. That's the truth. But the facts pointed otherwise. Joseph, in his mind, was robbing him from the spiritual encounter. So much so that it needed a divine intervention to bring about a renewing of the mind that he might be able to step into a spiritual impartation that he might be established. He was about to father the son. Wow. But it took a divine intervention. It took an impartation to bring about a renewed mind. I'm telling you. And so there's more that's happening in these meetings than what some of us give credit to. If your expectancy is based on your natural eye, you're in trouble. And the mind wants to rob you from an encounter. I went to Black River Falls, Wisconsin after that meeting in Dallas, Texas. Never been to Black River Falls. That was my first meeting since, uh, that was my first time ever in Black River Falls. First meeting since I come off of the Bob Jones encounter. And I'm standing in there, and the first time I walk in this building, there's change, money, change, that's laid out all over the front between the uh, aisles. Just laying. I'm telling you, just like it happened, man. I walked in this church and I saw all that laying around. I said, oh my God, what kind of a nut job did we do here? Lord, why did you send me to Black River Falls, Wisconsin? For all I knew, that was the offering. You know, I didn't know. And so as I'm sitting here debating... <laughs> then uh, all of a sudden the pastor says, now listen, <laughs> those of you that are here for the first time, you're probably wondering why this change is laying up here on the floor. I said, that would be me. And so uh, he says, uh, we're doing it as a prophetic act that when people respond to the altar calls, they have to cross over into change. Woo! Okay, all of a sudden, I'm repenting. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry, you're so good, you're so good. Thank you for Black River Falls. I love Black River Falls. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me, Lord. Thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm standing there, and uh, now I didn't realize it, but I realized it later, but at the moment it happened, I didn't realize it. I'm standing with my Bible when it was my time to get up and talk, and I'm standing there, and I didn't realize it, but I'm standing right in the middle of the, the change, and I'm sitting here with my Bible, and suddenly I feel the crisp, cool breeze run across my face. Suddenly I feel the wind of the Spirit. And I'm standing there, and the first thing I did was go. <laughs> and Black River Falls, apparently the climate isn't necessary for air conditioning. They didn't even have a duck unit in the place. So we're not dealing with an air conditioner. What happened? Impartation. And the only thing I knew to do was activate it and say, through the power of decree, you just decree it. I said, the wind of the Spirit's in the room. And I just watched people's response and they just got big like headlights. And it was just like, you know, we don't understand that stuff. Why is foolishness to the natural mind? Wind of the Spirit, what? It's in the room. Now, you'll find it biblically in the book of Zechariah, and it talks about the four winds that are established in the four corners of the earth, and the purpose of the four winds is to bring about the plans and purposes of God. So it's a realm of impartation. So when the wind of the Spirit comes, that's actually how God is going to establish us. That's the spiritual gift. The wind. Woo! The wind. But most people miss it. Wind of the Spirit. Man, I don't need no wind of the 
the Spirit. Man, you lost your mind. It's true. The very thing that offends you could possibly be the very vehicle carrying your breakthrough. Many times I've been offended. Many times I've allowed my mind to rob me of a true encounter, a true impartation. Because I'm caught up in what I can see, not what I know. That's pretty good. How many know Bobby Connors? I'm in a meeting in Bobby Connors in uh, Amarillo, Texas. And Bobby comes up and he says, come here. I said, yeah. He says, give me your hand. He takes my hand and he goes. And he takes it and he goes. And I went, whoa. Whoa. I said, okay. I like that. What exactly is going on there? He said, glory. It's bringing about a renewed mind that you can begin to think on these things, things which are above and not on the earth, where you can begin to exercise your senses to discern not what's right or what's wrong, what's true. That's what makes us different than a lot of the spirituality type individuals that are out there today. They're still looking for truth. We actually found it. He lives in us. And He just wants out. And the Holy Spirit has been the seal to bring about the clarity and understanding that you've got it. He says, I'm, that's my job. I'm going to guide you into all truth. That's my job! But we want to analyze everything with the natural mind and it begins to rob us and we get into debate. That's right, that's wrong. That's right, that's wrong. That's right, that's wrong. And a house divided can't stand. So we're not establishing our houses on truth. We're establishing it on what's right and what's wrong. Then we'll bounce it off of two or three people. What do you think? What do you think? Well, if you do it, you agree. If you don't, you don't. What's going on? Gold? You see it? Yeah, it's good. It's awesome. Thank you, Lord, for the gold. You possess what you pursue. Maybe that offends some minds. I don't know. I got my second diamond just in February. Got my second diamond. The first diamond I got, I was sitting in a a Patricia King event, a supernatural conference in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, I was uh, catching for a guy by the name of... uh, Oh, you'd know him if I said his name. He's had uh, numerous confirmed people raised from the dead in his uh, in his meetings. He's got real thick glasses. Now, real thick glasses, real redneck. He's out of Mexico. Yep, David. Yep, David Hogan. Yeah, David Hogan. Does anybody has ever anybody ever been, had an encounter with David Hogan? This dude, his country is all outdoors, man. All right, no joke. Big burly guy too, man. I mean, if, I mean, if he punched you, you're in trouble. And uh, and he's he's in uh, the arena where uh, you know there's a there's drug cartel. You know they're not playing in Mexico, friends. There's a war happening in America, and it's no joke. And he's over there where the rubber meets the road, and so uh, he doesn't come into America that often. But uh, I'm sitting there catching for him. There's about 2,000 people at this conference. Now, you got to realize, man, i got my suit on, you know, just uh, doing what we do, you know. And, uh, and I see in the midst of worship, uh, Mr. Hogan keeps going. And, and you got to remember his eyes. He's got these thick glasses like this thick, so his eyes, man, are just like. You know, really big, and so he's looking, and he's doing this, and and I'm standing there, and I'm just like, what in the world is this guy doing? 
And so I said, excuse me, Mr. Hogan. I said, what are you doing? There's diamonds manifesting on the floor, boy. <laughs> That's exactly how he said it. I said, oh, my gosh, man, no kidding. So, you know, a few minutes went by, and I just thought to myself, man, that's crazy. But then I found myself going. <laughs> you know? Why? Because it's for a king. What's the scripture? I just got caught up in a buzz. It's for a king to search out a matter. No, 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 no. Shandarala uh, Kandarala. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. You possess what you pursue. Does it offend the natural mind? Sure. But I'm more interested in what the spirit of truth has to say. The Bible says that if you believe in the prophets, sow into a prophet. If you sow faith into a prophet, you can reap a prophet's reward. Real prophets, what's on them has potential to come on you. It's true. And so I'm just fascinated, just crazy enough to believe it. It only takes a mustard seed. So what do I care? And I'm just like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I'm looking. I don't see nothing. Worship's over. I sit down on my chair. Sit down. I sit down just like this. And I look down and I see blue sparkly uh, dust on the floor. And I'm looking at it like, what in the world? And I take my hands and I do this. A diamond pops out. I have the diamond to this day. I have it in my secret place. Now, it's not so much the diamond that kind of blew me away because it, it actually did. I'm not going to lie to you. It did. But I've got friends that uh, they're getting gemstones that are the size of boulders, man. You know, rocks. And I'm looking at this thing and it's so tiny. <laughs> it's cool. But it's tiny. And uh, I'm just kind of looking at it and rolling it around. And the, and the lady sitting next to me is like, oh, my God, you got a diamond. And I said, excuse me, Mr. Hogan. I said, uh, is this what you're seeing? You got one right there, boy. I said, wow, praise the Lord, man. But then it's not so much about the diamond. It's not so much about uh, what happened as much as it's about God is speaking. 